Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mac. Today we're going to be making a little pizza. We have a special guest with us today, a mystery guest. An intentional guest an intentional instead of guest. someone just walking through. And she's not an action figure. Ta-da, it's me! It's Jane. I'm, yeah. You can say your twiddle... Twiddle. Oh, twiddle. You can say your twiddle handle. <laughs> you can you, find me. Wish. You can find me on twiddle at Boldly Jane. I'm the funniest one. And she makes delicious cupcakes. I truly do. Which we'll have a show about that someday. We, yeah, we should do a cupcake episode. That'd be at great. Some point. That'd be Ooh. really. We'll have to take a lot of pictures though, since we don't have a video camera. We'll, we'll also have to like edit out the swears as I mess up. Up. And I'll probably be and mostly eating. On that <laughs> And yeah. me calling myself a genius, the usual. Today we're going to make pizza, and we're going to make, um, I'm going to use one of my bread mixes. It's the hearty rye bread mix, um, and I would mentioned in my last episode that that's how I got started with this. So um, I'm going to make a Reuben pizza using the hearty rye bread mix as my crust. So I'm going to mix that up right now. They're really simple. I mean, seriously, really simple. They're made for people that have never baked before. So they have easy step-by-step -step instructions right um, in the bag. And uh, everything you need is in there except for the oil and water. So I have dumped the larger bag, which has the rye flour and caraway seeds and um, most of the base ingredients in it in the bowl and I've blended the packet of enclosed yeast into it so now I'm going to add um, a little bit of oil and a cup of water to that two and a half tablespoons of oil and a cup of water to that mix and this is like a one bowl kind of thing just to make it real simple you can use these in a bread machine but they're very simple to make just in a bowl without a bread machine so that's what I do also, I don't have a bread machine, so... <laughs> you are the bread machine. I am the bread machine. Now I'm adding the second bag that's found in your mixed bag, which is the extra flour for kneading, which it says on a tiny little sticker on it. And I'm just going to pour that in and keep um, stirring it until it's incorporated enough that it's really kind of hard to stir. Okay. And um, this is a really good... This is a good pizza, kind of a different twist on a pizza, but if you like Reuben's, it um, uses the rye as the base, and then we're going to use sauerkraut, um, roast beef lunch meat. I got a real nice lean roast beef lunch meat that I'm going to chop real finely. I have some sauerkraut I'm going to put on there, and some Swiss cheese, and then what I usually do is have the um, Thousand Islands dressing on the side, rather than actually bake that on the pizza. I put that on the side so you can kind of, you know, drizzle it on after so it doesn't get all hot and weird, you know. Like me. That's very what? <laughs> also, in addition to the usual computer background noise that I'm sure is there, we're watching Barney Miller in the other room, so that's what the other voices and sound effects are from. It's a special thing for Abe Vigoda. Yeah. He just passed away, so... Sweet that, you know, you get the full effect today. <laughs> Classic television. Very topical. Pizza. We record this on the day. Okay, now I'm kneading it in that same bowl. Um, just knead it in the bowl for a couple of minutes. Usually you don't have to add any extra flour to this from your own flour, but if you happen to overdo your water a little bit, you may have to, um, to do that. But Also can't weather affect... How yeah. much flour you need oh, yes. It does. We, that's one of the things, I mean, I don't know if it's the barometer's high, the barometer's low, I'm not sure, but some things don't rise as well. Um, different weather patterns, some things uh, go crazy rising, different weather patterns, so I kind of have not really paid attention. I know <laughs> that it happens, but I don't know when. So My cupcakes one time rose beautifully because it was very humid out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's what did it. So, But yeah. I don't know. Bread is different than Could cupcakes. Could be. Could be kind of like misting the oven, I guess. Yeah. You know? I'm going to start just, just 
getting humidifiers when I bake. What's your secret? Humidifiers. Humidifiers. Uh, I was baking one of just the regular white bread mixes when I was at school, and they had a kitchen in the laundry room, so it's always kind of warm in there, and it should have been the perfect environment for baking bread, and it wasn't rising, wasn't rising. I thought it might be something with the weather, or maybe it was too cold, and then it turns out the yeast had died. Oh no! <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So I tried to make pizzas with bread that would not rise. Okay, now I'm putting about a tablespoon of oil into the bowl to coat the uh, rye dough while it rises. You just flip it over, put it in, flip it over. And that's the and same then, bowl you mixed it in? Yes, same bowl. One bowl. It's a one bowl mix. You don't even need to clean it out between. That's then, really nice because as a college student who makes bread, you have one bowl. I have one bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have two now because someone put one in my mailbox and now I've, I just hey, use it. How big awesome. is your mailbox? It's pretty... It's for cab. So oh, it's, okay. it's supposed to be for, like, the things that I use in my job and the documents that I need. But no, someone put a bowl in there. So now I'm free bowl. I yeah. washed it twice. Just in case. It was like a death bowl. A bowl of death? As it were. One time I got a uh, pie server in my mailbox. Hmm. It was real weird. It was from uh, the RA, but not, <laughs> not the RA of my floor. A different that's RA a really, in the building. That's a really who subtle knew I made pies. That's so funny. <laughs> that's like, hey, I uh, heard you make pies, so might, we'll uh, help each other out. We might have a use for this. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe you can serve certain people some pie with it. Did it have their phone number on the oh handle or anything know. like that? And like they all but she three signed flavors. it. Goes, I'm sure you'll find a good use for this. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Making bread in a dorm isn't fun because I get flour everywhere. Yeah. Um, and it's the first two times I made bread, it was a disaster. I'm gonna have to get some more mixes though. Um, I know where you can get those mixes. Yeah, I hear you can just like Google it on the internet and people's will come up. I think. Um, Be careful of the cords. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna mix up some white, uh, some regular old white. Boring. Boring uh, bread dough for classic. those people that Not don't boring. like classic. rye. I like yeah. rye, but I don't like anything other than roast beef that's on a Reuben. Wow. So what you're basically saying is that... She'd like a I, meat I like, pie. I like a rye bread with roast beef on it as a sandwich. Is what I'm saying. It's like a boring... <laughs> that's a Ryan. Because it's boring. Boring. I've never met an interesting Ryan. Yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. When I make, I my tried white, to think of one, but uh, huh? no such luck. When I make my white, I do the same thing. I just mix. I put my yeast directly into my flour um, because it works for me, and that's what I do. So, if you don't need to proof it, why would you? Right. So this this works fine like this, and I've had that's um, what I talked about before in my origins show that <laughs> I had success. So it was episode two, Mary Mac Origins. <laughs> Refer there for more info. And, uh, and it works. So all my bread mixes are like that. You just add the uh, yeast directly to the flour mixture and mix it up. And it's very, very simple and very successful. Everybody that's used them, um, people even that don't bake, have liked them and done really well with them. So... Been, it's been quite good. Do vegan dieters eat bread that has used yeast? Because yeast is alive. Boy. Yes, however, I would also say vegan people do get vaccines, which might con they contain um, versions, oh. weakened versions Why of a living creature, which is a virus. Hmm. So I don't see why they wouldn't I don't know where the line the is. There is no line. Well, they eat plants. They can't, yeast is like an like a more animally than a plant. It's I feel like because it because no. it eats it, it eats and things eat. Plants, plants also eat. Have they, you ever heard of a Venus flytrap or a pitcher plant? I feel like that's weird. And those are just 
there are animals in disguise and we just don't realize I that. don't know. Like, I'm just like making pizza. Just, <laughs> okay. I like thinking about it as a living thing. And then you just go, thanks, little buddies. I'm making my bread get real big. Your farts are great, and we love you for them. <laughs> true. Bread comes from yeast farts. I wish someone would say that to me someday. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. Just maybe the first part, like the thanks little buddy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could get that maybe. I'll try real hard. I'm mixing this all up. And uh, we'll put this aside to rise also. I forgot to take a picture of my mixing up the rye, but I'll take a picture of the finished dough. And then we'll take put a it picture of you mixing up the white flour. Much more boring. Beautiful. <laughs> it's the worst one. <laughs> I'm not particularly photogenic, so. <laughs> well, you are wearing this I have a face woman. for podcasting. That's uh, Wonder Woman. What? I, I know. I said I have a face it's for It's a podcast. W. <laughs> um, the S isn't actually an S, so your logic is off. Well, that's not actually a W, yeah, but okay. it still stands was, for Wonder I Woman and wrong. Superman. I was wrong. <laughs> okay, the white um, dough doesn't have to do a double rise. It's a single rise dough, so... It doesn't need to build any uh, gluten. It's got plenty in there, so this is finish not this up. gluten free. No, it's not gluten free at all. <laughs> um, rye is low gluten, but even my rye has white flour in it too. So because it it won't rise well or be edible if you don't yeah, use any white to, flour. It's yeah, it's hard to get a good rise out of it. So I think didn't you try that once to make it with uh, like all. I've tried a couple different gluten-free breads for people. It's difficult. I, I don't want to get into it because mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's gluten allergies are a very serious issue, not to be taken lightly, and you have to have an absolutely gluten-free environment to do anything like that. Because if somebody has a sensitivity, a sensitivity is one thing, but an all-out allergy is completely another, and it can be very bad. So I did try to make a bread for a boy I know, know his mom asked me to see if we could make one up that he could eat but he's allergic to everything <laughs> so I did try it and I came up with a recipe that I gave to her oh brother well you'd have to <laughs> to make a gluten free bread for your business you would have to get a just build a shed or something because there is flour in every single area of this house yeah you'd have to uh, well it's a separate building is what people tend to do they build a new separate building to do that in so that's the, like Bob's Red Mill built an entire separate production facility for all their gluten-free. Oh, wow. You know, because, well, you want to make sure, like I said, you don't want to have somebody uh, have an issue, you know. So, okay, and there's our white bread, and that's going to rise uh, for, it'll take about an hour, so we'll goof around for a bit, and then we'll come back and, and go back to it. We'll be right back with more In the Kitchen with Mary Mac. Okay, our rye dough is nice and risen and rather oddly shaped because when I punched it down, it kind of folded over. So it's ready to go, and we're going to make it into a pizza crust. We're going to use the whole thing for our pizza crust. So what I'm going to do is uh, squeeze the air out of it and spread it on the pizza pan. And try to spread it evenly enough so that you can put a little border on it because we're going to be having a lot of toppings. One mix is just enough for um, a regular size pizza pan, which is a 12 inch pizza pan. Um, spreading it around. It's kind of, it's weird to spread because it's not real stretchy like normal dough that you would use for pizza. So it's, you really got to kind of work it a little bit. Is it the gluten that makes it more stretchy then? Yeah. Yeah. And this, this, I mean, it spreads fine, but you just have to be patient with it and and work it around. That's That looks delightful. Okay, now, then if we're gonna put our, what should we put down first? I'm thinking the sauerkraut. That's what I thought yeah, too. I can't remember, I haven't made one in a little while. Bed. So we're gonna put the sauerkraut down first. And what I did, I put the sauerkraut in a strainer and let it drain over the sink for a little while to uh, get some of the excess water off of it. Cause you don't wanna have, you know, did you have to mince it or anything? Or? No, I didn't. I just left it as it was. So I'm putting about, um, probably about a cup of sauerkraut on there. I think that's enough. I think so too, because I think it would be 
overpowering if you had too much in there, you know. And then uh, make sure you spread it around pretty good. Try not to get it up over the side though, because then it'll... I don't think burnt sauerkraut sounds like a delightful thing to me. <laughs> but It sounds pretty terrible, really. I haven't made one of these in a while, so I really like them. Now we're going to put the beef lunch meat on here. And I got a lean, a very lean beef lunch meat, and I, uh, I just chopped it up, not too small, but kind of chopped it up a little bit, and I'm breaking it up so it spreads evenly. And if there's any fat on it, remove that, because you don't want that on your pizza, you know. You don't know me. I've also done this, <laughs> I've done this with turkey, too, which is called a Rachel. But I've done it with turkey, and it's very good as well. Because turkeys are, bo are, are girls, and cows are boys? I don't know why they That's... call it that. Yeah, what? Like how I think you, dogs I, are boys and cats are girls. Listen, I think it should go by the okay. first letter of the meat. So it's roast beef, it's a Reuben. So turkey, it should be a Ted. Tina, Tom. But, but why isn't Tom. this... Tom would be perfect. Why isn't this a Bob? Because it's beef. Because it's roast beef. It's roast well, beef. What is the difference? Listen. Oh, don't they use corned beef too? Um, yeah, they use corned beef in it. So I it's a Clancy? Personally, in my personal opinion. <laughs> Clancy. That's I do perfect. not like corned beef in um, using it in something like this because it tends to have a lot of fat marbled through it, mm. the beef that they use. I prefer to use regular roast beef lunch meat. I just think it works better. Now I'm putting shredded Swiss cheese over the top, and I used uh, four ounces of Swiss cheese, and I shredded it up. So that's all ready to go. I'm going to bake it in a uh, 385 degrees oven on convection, which would translate to about 375 normal. And I told you before about my oven, and I had to check the temperature on it, you know, and all that jazz. So there we go. We're going to put her in the oven. Okay, now we're going to make the pizza with the uh, basic white bread recipe dough. And, Fun um, fact, that's uh, Anna's nickname. Yeah. Whoa. White bread recipe dough is my nickname. Basic white bread as well. Basic oh. <laughs> that's her rapper name. <laughs> it's Macaulay's Well, I song. can't rap, so it's very accurate. <laughs> okay. Tell us about your sauce. So I put the sauce on it. You can use whatever sauce you like. I prefer to use a pasta sauce like Prego, um, you know, Prego Ragu or whatever like that. I don't make my own homemade sauce. I have in the past made my own homemade sauce, but I just, you know, for ease, that's what I do. Makes Certain it easy. children thought like, they were bugs. Yes, if you like your own homemade sauce, by all means use it. Um, but I'm just using a basic sauce, and um, we're going to make, first we're going to make a meat lover's pizza, because my son loves this pizza, so we're going to make him meat lover's pizza, which is basically going to be some... Uh, Italian sausage that was baked and cooled and sliced and then we're gonna put that on Are you gonna make a smiley face out of it? No, no. he's not a happy he's not a happy, lover. He's not a happy boy. And then I'm gonna put some pepperoni on on afterwards and he likes this kind of thing so I'm sure he'll be thrilled We'll tell him we only made a veggie <laughs> <laughs> you guys are mean. He'd be so bad. Very mean. He might leave. He might, and then more pizza for He's us. He's not allowed to drive. Where would he go? <gasps> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Okay, okay there's our meat delivery. lover's pizza. <laughs> He'll order delivery pizza on a night we're having homemade pizza. Well, we're going to put some cheese on top, some shredded mozzarella on top of that. Um, I always put the cheese on right while I'm baking because then it kind of lets all the flavors meld. Well, it's in the oven. So his pizza is getting shredded mozzarella. And there we go. And we're going to put that in the oven. Okay. Are you documenting all this for uh, your bakehouse page? So you have instructions? I am. She used awesome. all the mozzarella on the meat lovers. We probably have more. What's left? Oh, Provolone. Okay. <laughs> okay, next. It's better than mozzarella anyway. <laughs> we're going to make an everything pizza. It's going to have uh, sausage, pepperoni, mushrooms, mild pepper rings, and olives. So it's going to be a 
you know, supreme, pizza supreme. So I sliced the olives, uh, I drained them, I drained the pepper rings, drained the mushrooms. So you don't want to have, that's what's hard, you don't want to have a lot of moisture. If you're going to use fresh vegetables on your pizza, what you want to do is heat them just a little bit to draw some of the moisture out because it'll really help out your pizza to not have this puddle on the top of it, which it will often get with that. So you can take those vegetables and um, put either saute them lightly in a skillet or you can do them in the microwave if you like to use a microwave. And then you can just take that and uh, set them on paper toweling to drain and take some of the moisture out. So this is going to be our, our everything pizza. I'm putting the sauce on right now. You don't. You have to watch. Don't be too heavy with your sauce doing this. And you can use. I have um, eight different bread mixes available. I have the white bread mix. I have a wheat bread mix, oatmeal, wheat germ. You can use just about any kind of bread to make a pizza. Um, could you make a pumpernickel pizza? A pumpernickel pizza would be amazing. I think, wouldn't it? I don't know. What would you put on it? I feel like chicken would be good on a pumpernickel oh, yeah. pizza. Oh yeah. But what would you use for the sauce? Because I, I don't think I'd probably pasta use, sauce would be good. Not on put it. a sauce on it. I would probably use a type of cheese instead. Oh, oh, like a good like salty cheese. Yeah, that would be that would be awesome. Well, there goes our timer for our Reuben pizza. Let me go take a look at that real quick. Is it done already? Hopefully. Yeah, I was gonna say, you just put that in like two minutes ago. Which means I can eat it right now! <laughs> thing, everything is already baked on there. Exactly. Just the bread. Just the bread is all I need. It doesn't have raw eggs in it anyway, so you're good. Okay, I just turned it a quarter turn in the oven to, so that it bakes evenly, and I uh, put it on for some more time. So I'm back to our little everything pizza here. You can, I mean, you can basically put anything you want on a pizza. When the weather warms up, we'll do this again, and we'll use uh, fresh vegetables out of the garden. We can make some wonderful tomato pizzas and uh, zucchini. With bell peppers. Bell peppers, garlic, onions, all sorts of fabulous things. There's an enormous chunk of sausage over on the one side. Yes, there is. It's delightful. Let's bring our mushrooms in. Try, you can try different sorts of cheeses, too, that you like. I mean, don't be afraid to experiment. Of course, if you have children, you may not want to experiment with their pizza. But on your own pizza, you can have a lot of fun. And you can make a, you know, you can make yourself a gourmet pizza for a very reasonable price. Not very, it doesn't take very long at all. Pizza's getting to be quite expensive these days. I was kind of shocked the last time I got it local. You know, when you order pizza for your family and it comes out to be 40 or $50, that's... Pretty, yeah. That's a pretty big chunk of change. Now we're going to put provolone on the everything pizza. And I like provolone. That's my cheese of choice. It's a good all-purpose cheese. <laughs> if all of your purposes are pizzas and sandwiches. Yes. I use it to clean my sink. It also <laughs> works well under furniture. It's sliding <laughs> easily along the floor. Okay. It's the cheese of the people. The cheese of the, the people. The people's cheese. Would you call it the cheese letariat? Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't, but you Would can. you call it the provletariat? I would call it the provletariat. <laughs> um, I'm going to take that. That's mine now. Heavens, heavens, heavens. TM, go ahead. If you find someone else in the world who appreciates that joke, don't let them get away. <laughs> <laughs> you could make a little hammer and sickle out of olives. <laughs> Carl would be proud. <laughs> Okay, and then Anna, on a first name basis. Anna's pizza is basically a shell with sauce on it. Yep. So that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Straightforward kind of pizza. Basic white bread. That's me. They call me complicated rye. <laughs> complicated rye. Okay. And then we're just waiting on our pizzas to be done, and then we'll try them out and tell you how they taste. And then you'll have to try them yourselves. That's how it works here. <laughs> we make delicious food. So you buy the mix and try it. Okay, and then the when you buy the uh, Mary Mac Bakehouse bread mix, I have directions inside for doing all different sorts of things with your bread mix, making rolls, cinnamon rolls, not in the rye mixes, 
Um, the rye mix That'd is be very bad. Good, basically. <laughs> Ooh, but I will. What about like a cheese and bacon roll? Hey, that'd be good. Yeah. Boy, wouldn't that be good in the pro in the uh, yeah. in the uh, onion? Well, uh, yeah, in the onion rye or in the um, pumpernickel. Pumpernickel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could do cinnamon rolls, sort of like I've done. Cin- strange cinnamon rolls. That would be a good one. Putting different fillings in them. Mm-hmm. Garlic and butter and yes. cheese and yummy things like that. You could just do a in the white bread mix, like put garlic and butter in it. Uh huh. That'd be delicious. It's garlic bread. Well, I have but... made, I did make rolls like that one time, and they were very good. I tried that out. So you cannot go wrong. That'd be a good idea for that. a show, a cinnamon roll show. But they aren't cinnamon rolls. They're whatever. Yeah. Well, we could make cinnamon rolls and then put. You know. That's not <laughs> elevating the art form. No, but we could start with that and then say, <laughs> and now we're going to fill this with bacon and maple. I've made that. Maple yeah, icing she, on them. She did that before. That. Mm. That's trademarked. You didn't trademark it, though. Pineapple you know on ham? Did you go to the patent office? Yeah. Pineapple on ham. I went to patent office. Oh, okay. I the said, dentists? I said, hey, patent. <laughs> Got I don't, a cavity. I don't think they take also, care of that either. I need to register a trademark. <laughs> All right, we've got our Reuben pizza out of the oven. And uh, came out really nice. It cut really well. Crust seems to be nice and crispy. Now if I can ever get any of the Thousand Islands dressing to come out. <laughs> That's me tapping the Thousand Islands dressing. Oh, okay. Looks like the roast beef browned up really nice. Yeah. Drizzle a little bit of that on there. Looks really Really wonderful. Our official taste tester guest, Jane. Thank you, thank you. Is going you. to try it. All right. And tell us what she thinks of it. Oh, it's holding up really nice. Got a nice thick crust. Yeah, the crust came out beautifully. Mmm. That's really good. There's the perfect amount of sauerkraut. The roast beef is browned up real nice. The crust has a nice browned bottom, which gives it a little bit of crunch. We baked it at about for about 20 minutes. Moved his position in the oven a couple times. The Southern Island's really like adds to it. I might put a little more cheese on it just because I'm a cheese fiend. Okay. All right then. then. I think you passed. Very Welcome good. to MasterChef. Well, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, we already tried the Reuben pizza. Now we're going to try the everything pizza, which has... Uh, pepperoni and sausage, mushrooms, olives, um, peppers, pepper rings, and provolone cheese. And then we have the Meat Lovers Pizza, which has sausage, pepperoni, and mozzarella cheese. And then we have the Anna Pizza, which has sauce. Because <laughs> Anna doesn't and like crust. Anna. And crust, yes. <laughs> and then we threw some cheese on one for Rachel because she didn't like any of the extras. So, so uh, what's everybody think? How was your? How would you like the uh, su- pizza supreme, Jay? I love provolone on pizza much. It's I think it's a lot better than mozzarella. It's gooier. I think it has like a better taste. Where like a lot of mozzarellas you find, they're just a little, little bland. But normally, if you get like a provolone, that's like a thick slice for lunch meat. It's, it has a really good cheesy taste, so I like that on the pizza. Um, I really like the homemade crust because a lot of times when you get pizza from some place you get a really like bland crust that they just use like as a base where a homemade crust you get a lot of flavor and a good base to build flavor on. Um, I'm not a huge fan of meat <laughs> so I, I really like the uh, the what are they, the pepper relish peppers mm. on there. Because they, they're really tasty and they got a little bit of a kick. And mushrooms and olives are always good on pizza. It's like a really classic pizza taste. And the uh, the sliced sausage was actually pretty good on there. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't um, like a crumbled brown sausage, which sometimes like gets weird. Um, and pepperoni is always good. So Yeah, and it's not even... that. That's uh, It's locally made sausage. It's made by Beatty's Market in Enon Valley and just no fat no additives I mean it's just it's just good it's very very good mm. and the, the crust got so super thick yeah. on this it's ridiculous and we used uh, what kind of sauce was that that we had um Giarusa Giarusa sauce in a can uh we got that because it doesn't have added citric acid and uh 
Oh yeah. It's which is a preservative, so it just basically it's it's um, tomatoes and spices, which is very it's very good sauce. It's a very good sauce to use on pizza. Uh, Jane made us up this really nice little thing to dip our crusts in with butter and garlic and a little uh, bit of mixed oregano. mixed garlic and I put some uh, granulated garlic and onions and a little oregano in there just to give it, you know, make it fancy. Yeah, fancy. It, was a, it was a one stick of butter and uh, probably about a teaspoon of well, minced I'd garlic. Well, i like a heaping. A heaping teaspoon. Yeah. Huh? And uh, a dash of oregano. Yeah. Uh, a onion. sprinkle, a whisper of granulated onion. <laughs> a whisper. A suggestion of, of garlic. Yeah, and it was very good. It was very good to dip. How'd you like your pizza, Anna, with just your crust and sauce? Well, I believe I'm the pizza. most able to review how good the sauce is, <laughs> because that's all that's on my pizza. I honestly think there should have been a little bit more sauce on it, just because it was like it was on so thin it kind of dried out a little oh, bit. Oh, I was trying Normally to go light it's for on you. Thicker. Since since you know, I was trying to go a little light for you. Sorry about that. I know. I'm allergic to all things that are good, except for chocolate. I'm not allergic to chocolate Eat or up. bread. So <laughs> Wait, I thought you were I'm just set. allergic to citric acid. Jane, it's in everything. It is. It's I in everything. You said this didn't have any. No, it didn't. It but doesn't tomatoes have, any added. have natural occurring citric acid. Yeah, yeah so it doesn't so. have as much as normal sauce does. Yeah. But still. What, what a dumb allergy we'll be to sick have. Tomorrow. Yeah, what, what a, a dumb, dumb allergy to have. God. Says the lactose intolerant person who eats cheese constantly. Yeah, you gotta fight through Our that. household <laughs> is a wreck here, people. Our household is an absolute wreck. We got all the weird things. Anyway. The crust was really good. Like I said, it just needed maybe a little bit more sauce. It'd be perfect. It baked up really nice. The crust, I mean, when you use one of my mixes to make one pizza, you're going to have a very nice thick crust. So this crust is, it's about, I would say, three-eighths of an inch to a half an inch thick in spots. So you get a really, really nice thick crust. So if you like super thin crust pizza, you could divide it in half and get two pizzas out of it. But like I said, we made, um, out of this dough out of the pizzas that we made we made four different pizzas mm -hmm. and uh i mean they came out really they came out really really great and it didn't take us i mean from start to finish we did other things but it doesn't take very long you just let the bread rise and go do something else and come back and punch it down throw your stuff on it so it's not i mean sometimes we get the idea that it's more convenient to take to get takeout or go pick up a pizza but really it's not. It's it's just the mm. idea that it is. But you're still spending, you know, the same amount of time driving, whatever, and you're definitely spending a lot more money. Right. So. Can you um, pre-make the crust? Yes, you can. And I have done that a few times. Um, you just bake it. Uh, this It takes um, about 15 minutes to bake a pizza if you're baking it. So what I do if I'm going to pre-make crust is I will make... Um, I'll make the crust, put it on the pizza pan, the greased pizza pan, and then I'll bake it for 10 minutes. I'll poke it with a fork so it doesn't blow up like a, it'll look like a pillow if you don't. But you just uh, push it onto your pizza pan, spread it out, poke it with a fork a few times, um, put it in the oven and bake it for 10 minutes. Bring it out, let it cool on a cooling rack, and then put it into a, a plastic bag sealed like a nice, uh, nice size Ziploc bag and um, seal it and put it in your freezer for whenever you're ready to use it and then you bring it out you thaw it put your sauce on it and throw it in the oven and you're ready to go so i mean it, and i did that for a very long time i mean it, it works really well so if you wanted to do something like that um i actually have a a bulk white uh recipe that i'll get on at some point um maybe when we're doing a bigger bake like that and put it on so that people can use that and it makes um four loaves of bread so if you did if if you're interested in doing something like that um we'll get that going and posted for the bulk size and uh that size you can make um your own pepperoni rolls your own pizza greens and that sort of thing so that could be a future episode there how to do you know what to do with all right. what do you do with all this dough we could call it <laughs> but um we could make fried dough we haven't done that in forever oh, I love fried dough oh, i guess we're gonna be doing that too it's and the it's, best and it's really like enough. i said you, you've got like 15 <laughs> minutes into mixing up your mixing up the dough and clean up you let the dough rise for an hour, so you do something else for an hour, and you come back and make what you're going to make. It seems very time-consuming, and I mean, really, you do have to be at home, 
You know, I mean, you could run out for a little while and come back, but it, it's once you're done with it, especially if you're doing some stuff to prepare your family for the upcoming week, it's um, kind of, it's definitely financially economical, but it's also time economical because you can, you know, get this done, put everything in the freezer, and then have a couple different things through the week. You can, you know, have your own buns, bread, uh, pizza shells done, roni rolls done. You got all your prep work. Yep. Right, and it's done. It, it's it's nice. Of course, if you have a family the size of ours, it's pretty much they're going to eat it that day. Yeah. But you know, but like we had we had um, six people eating tonight, and we had four pizzas, and we have um, two, three, four, five, ten slices of pizza left from thirty-two slices. We have ten slices of pizza left, <laughs> ten or twelve. So that will be tomorrow. You know, I'm sure mm-hmm. someone will have those for breakfast or lunch. <laughs> you make a sandwich by putting two slices together with the toppings in the middle. There you go. Some mayonnaise. There you go. Well, thanks a lot for listening. We hope you enjoyed it and hope you try out making a pizza. And as soon as we, uh, we're, we're hoping to get a web store up and running within the next month or so so that you can buy some of our mixes online, try them out yourself. But until then, they're available at Standing Chimney in New Galilee, Pennsylvania. And we'll be opening the first Saturday in March. So thanks for listening if you did. And if you didn't, too bad for you. Ha!